Hello and welcome to Anarcho Agony on. Yes! Used to be called NHS for Lefties, but. Oh, cool, we rebranded. We rebranded. I'm sorry, I'm very sober, so I'm a bit nervous for this one. But also, we had a bit of a hi- hi- hiatus? hiatus. Hiatus? Well, I guess we literally said that we're gonna only do it three times, so. But then you guys were so wonderful and so supportive and sent in even more amazing questions, and we thought. What's good for you is good for us, is good for you is good for us. Yes, yes. So I'm going to just do a little bit of a checkup that we're all going live and everything is okay. Shall I do the blood? Then, yes, yes. Um, and also shout out to 8th of March, perhaps. We'll do it at the beginning. Already? Then okay. Well. Okay, so for those of you who this is the first time tuning in, um, we are Anarcho Agony Aunts. Our kind of raison d'etre is to stop all the guys, mostly who have like anxieties and fears and questions about dating and women and romance from running over to Jordan Peterson and his Lobster Brigade and instead open a space on the left to be um, answering those kind of questions too. Ah, and no. oh, okay, that was me. Double me. <laughs> um, no, I think it's all going well. So to start and end the show, we just want to do a shout out. Obviously, 8th of March is this Friday and there's a women's strike in the UK and in lots of other countries as well. And be there. And if you're a dude who has female colleagues or female employees, don't be a dick. She's going to strike and you're going to support her. And if you're a woman or other person who's going to be striking, then see you on the picket lines. Yes. Women of the world unite. Yes. And uh, we're also going to try and be there. And yeah, mm-hmm. this is international. And so a huge shout out. Yeah. And we're going to also conti- uh, end the shout out. Well, end the show with the shout out as well, I think. Yeah. Do let us know if there are any technical issues. Thus far, it's looking all good. So that's great. Right. What other shout outs do uh, we need to do? Well, in general, just huge thank you. Again, we've, our inbox is bursting with lots of questions. As you can see, we started to change location again a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is temporary though. This was just because of, uh, yeah. Yeah, we had a bit of feedback. <laughs> Activist of, like, faces. <laughs> <laughs> that we need to like increase our production values, but like guys, we don't have the budget for that. Oh, actually, I might cheekily put the coffee link. On the I just learned what this is. It's not coffee. It's coffee. I mean, because we, I guess we are doing emotional labor. Oh god. I'm gonna cheekily put it there, but like, don't worry. So about is it that if they want to buy us a coffee, they buy us a coffee? Yeah. Um, if if you're minted, I'm gonna go. Yeah, if you're minted. If you're minted, please buy us some mints. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's do this. Should we do this? Should we do this? Wait, there was another thing I wanted to say. Oh yeah. Also, we're on YouTube now. Yes. That's our new thing. Um, and also, we do have some IRL shows coming up, so stay tuned for those as well. Yeah, you know, thank you so much again for all the, those who subscribed uh, subscribed on the YouTube mm. and lots of lovely comments there and a bunch of new questions that have yeah. sprung up from that as well. And also all of you who've sent us feedback um, anonymously and stuff like that, we really appreciate it and it's been so overwhelming how supportive and kind you've been about our project and it's really, that's, you know, that's like the reason we, we keep going with this is like the wonderful questions we get and the lovely feedback we've had, so thank you so much. For sure, yes, no, thank you. And the, um. Yeah, so sometimes we we reply to some of the feedback, but not all of it. But we will definitely reply uh, reply to all of it because all of it is really really important. And uh, follow Rowan on the on Twitter, and yeah, subscribe to our YouTube if you wish. But also don't worry about it. And we'll split all of these again questions into smaller sections. Now, I need to get drunk, so let's mm. do. Oh, very very interesting questions today. Very different. Yeah, again. yeah, different from last times and different from each other. Um, fun variety, I'd say. Yes, also, um, one of them, the one about breasts, <laughs> we might as well put the, <laughs> put the disclaimer there, I don't even know, I guess teaser. We'll talk about it in the end, because I think we need to be Content note, boobs. Fairly, fairly best about on that one. <laughs> so, although it came in quite early, we're going to shift it for a bit mm-hmm. later on. Yes, yes. Okay, so, um, actually, the first two questions are quite similar to each other, so I'm going to read them both out, and then we're going to discuss, obviously, like, each individual one, but both kind of together as a conversation cupcake. Yes. Also, just this 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 particular one, it has so many... If it has so many individual questions to it, so I think we should cover it as like individual questions almost, because I think that might be easier for me personally. So shouldn't like, I read it out once sure, and then sure. we'll sure. go through it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. They so will probably like go like this because that's what we do anyway. Yeah. Okay. So the first one, thank you again, says, "What are the things you think a person needs to sort out for or about themselves before they can be in a healthy relationship?" And then we got the second one that's quite long and we think is quite similar. So I'm going to read that out too and we're going to answer them both. 
if you have mental health issues that mean date that mean dating you will involve a lot of emotional labor for your partner should you date or should you stay celibate at least until you have all of your issues fixed if you want to date how do you be open about your issues as early as possible without scaring away any potential partners I'm coming from the point of view of a cishet male anarcho-feminist that doesn't want to seduce another anarcho-babe into a relationship that involves a fuck-ton of unpaid, heartbreaking emotional labour. I guess it kind of applies to anybody with a lot of baggage and privilege. How do you have a relationship when you know that your baggage will likely hurt your partner without it being an exploitative, toxic, patriarchal... question mark? If we can't be healthy, should we be celibate? When is the right time to bring up your issues when dating? I don't want to wave my big red flags too early, but always want to be open and honest with partners and make sure any consent they give is true informed consent. How do I make like Beyonce and be crazy in love? Pow. Beautifully wow. phrased as well. Yes. Love that Beyonce and, line. Yes, and even the fact that you are, you know, self aware enough to even know that that's an issue and, and, and mm -hmm. ask, that's huge. I'm gonna whip out my notebook as I usually ah. do. A little bit. I don't really have many notes on this. But um, first of all, I will just say, <laughs> I, I am mesmerized that that's actually a thing because the, the boy that late, most lately rejected me <laughs> was basically like, it's not you, it's me, I just need to sort myself out. And I really, really thought that that's just a polite way to reject me, which it probably was, which it probably was, kudos to him. But like, I, I'm mesmerized that actually someone thinks that way. Like, that's amazing to me. Because I really thought that he was just like... Well, maybe he did it anyways. But he was like, look, I'm not in the best place, like, in terms of my mental health. I don't think I should do this to you. And so, yeah, we're we're not a thing as such. And I really was like, oh, that's really nice. You're just not into me. I'm not that. The thing is, people probably both say it when it's true and when they want to let you down easy. <laughs> like, like, I'm sure I've used it for both. <laughs> like... So for, yeah, so in a way it was very reassuring. Again, next time, you know, I don't know. It's just kind of nice to think that perhaps it was true. <laughs> that it wasn't just me. <laughs> but I don't know, probably it was. Okay, so I have a lot of thoughts about this because I have been both people. I have been the person who was emotionally involved with someone who had a lot of mental health issues and it, I found it very, very difficult and also emotionally draining whilst on, wanting to be empathetic and caring and supportive. And I have been the person who, in retrospect, definitely partly drove my ex-girlfriend away by every time she texted me, how are you doing, Rowan? I would be like, terrible. Everything is shit. I'm so depressed. My life is awful. And understandably, she wasn't so into that. And so, like, at the time, I thought that like, I was brilliant and perfect and charming. And I was. But I was also definitely negative and all of those things. So basically, I completely... And I didn't understand that at the time. I only understood that after. So I completely relate to not wanting to be like, Hey, charming stranger, here's my baggage. But I also, in the, the first example I used... Sorry, I'm flip-flopping... I was kind of, I don't know, seduced by a persona of mental health that it turned out was just a facade and that was very damaging for me and probably also for the other person when it eventually collapsed. So just a little technical thing. Your mic. Where, oh where's God, where's it gone? <laughs> oh, there it is. Sorry. Okay, so it's okay, yeah? Yeah, it was just buried. Okay, sorry, but that's fine. Um, um, <laughs> yeah, no. So, but, I mean, again... Um, so I wonder, because obviously there are the sort of relationships where someone will enrich you and, you know, you'll meet them and actually you will get better. You know, um, there's been so many times as well that we've been in the pits and then we met someone and they brought us back. And you, because and we di it didn't necessarily felt like labor, you know, like from their point of view, because they were so in love or, or, you know, or so, I don't know, just really believed in that person. So and then obviously there's the other scale, you know, where obviously... Um, you would just be asking too much. So basically, I don't necessarily think that there's not a person out there that even with all of your baggage, you wouldn't make them happy. But okay, so to break this down, I think, in terms of the first question, because it was a bit snappier, and I think we'll, with the second one, we'll maybe go yeah. question by question. Um, when should you not be with someone? You shouldn't be with someone if you don't feel empathy to them, if you don't, you, if you don't necessarily, if you can't put your yourself in their in their shoes if you can't be supportive of them really if you're supportive even if you go like look i'm a bit in my own space i can't do this right now but as long as you're supportive of them and what they're doing i think that's okay i mean i just think you know it's not necessarily about 
basically you as such, but as long as they kind of feel like they're supported, and then you sort of, you know, obviously, hopefully with their help, s begin to sort the stuff out. Uh, but as long as they're supporting whatever they're individually doing, so that their full-time job doesn't just become caring for you or whatnot, but that they have their own thing that is fulfilling them as well, and that, you know, the other parts of their life or whatnot is, is to help you. But you have to be extremely, I suppose, supportive of whatever it is that they're doing apart from you, because caring for you might become a very, very fundamental part of their lives, right? But if there's a way to to make sure that that person, that you are not the only, you know, not the only thing that that person is doing, and that you encourage that. But then would you also say on the flip side, one of the things that you should sort out before dating someone, say, is having something of your own so that you don't end up making that person your thing so in a way yes i completely agree but i suppose sometimes people are in a, such a dark place where they can't even have their own thing mm. you know what i mean like they're literally i don't know they don't go out of, got out, got out of bed or like they're not in you know they don't have like a job or education or like some sort of project or whatnot and in that in that really really dark place i suppose that's the only thing you can do is support the other person but obviously i mean we would somewhat recommend well, not recommend i don't know if there's a way for you to find something that you love and begin to nurture that into a further project, whatever that may be, whether that is, you know, not necessarily like money bringing or education bringing, but something perhaps that could be evolutionized into a certain... Because this is my question, because I want a relationship the most when I've got nothing when I'm at the bottomest and I just want someone to like care for me and to be my thing that I do and yet I know that I'm my not goodest self when I'm in that state so it's like it's kind of a chicken or egg thing right yeah which is I mean that's what I found in my current situation definitely is that the two came along at the same time right mm -hmm. but I don't know if I hadn't had one if the other would have felt good and vice versa but at the same time it's not necessarily fair to start a relationship with someone as to make them your thing that is worth be doing stuff for does that yes no I, I agree that they can't probably it is not a healthy place to start a relationship where you think that they will be the only thing that will make you happy right that's a very succinct way of what I was trying to say yeah no no but like but that's yeah it is very difficult because, of course, you know, to be fair, sometimes that is the only thing that will make you happy. Yeah. Right? You just want to be hugged and kissed and loved and, like, whatever it is that you... And you could be doing a million other things. You could be doing all these projects and all these, like, jobs and all that stuff and still be depressed as fuck. Mm. And then that is the only thing that will make you happy. But right? I feel like other agony aunts would say, like... Yeah, you need to sort your, you shouldn't rely on someone else to give you your happiness. And while I think that's true, I find it much easier to find my own happiness when I'm with someone. And I just do, you know, and it's like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. And yet, even if I have been in like really, really long term, awesome relationships, the happiest I've been with them was when I had my own thing. Yeah, well. exactly. Mm. Yeah. So it's, yeah. We apologize for the squeaky. Chair. Yeah, I, it's, it's mine. I don't know what to do about it. No, I don't think it's, it's mine as well. Sorry, guys. We hope it's not irritating too much because we need to... Yeah, just mine as well. Anyways. <laughs> Should we go through those questions okay. individually? Because I think, like, again, there's a lot there. We do want to unpack it. Wait, from the first one, is there anything else you would say that someone needs to have sorted before they start a relationship? I mean, I think capitalists would say, like, you know, an income or whatever, but... <laughs> So this is complicated, right? Like, I think that's extremely dependent on, 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 on one state, right? I mean, I would say... Like, I'm at a point in my life where, yes, certain things, like, particular way of looking after yourself or, like, probably certain, like, Personal conditions. Hygiene. Yeah, like, that's important to me. But, like, that's, I know that I'm peddling the stereotypical sort of normy way of looking at things. I'm just, I'm just personally at that particular point in my well, life. But also like, subjective what, like, ambition or income or whatever means. So it's okay. 100%. Like, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is a sort of, sort of very... London centric urban answer, I think, you know, for some, yeah, I mean, again, for people that just want to live in the countryside and that's all the thing. But that's also, you know, that's their thing and that's fine. Yeah. I think as long as someone has passion for something, right? Right. So you'd say an individual passion. Are there things you would need in order to start dating? Well, yeah, personal hygiene. Is personal but hygiene. Again, but some people are into that as well. So that's true. That is our Absolutely. subjective thing, Absolutely. is that we subjectively like hygiene. <laughs> 
Sorry. Yeah. No, but I would say empathy for me and support for support for, for, yeah, that's for, nice. my, for me. Maybe for, that for yeah. my own ambition as such. That's personally. And as a kind of, it's an abstract question, but I would say, I want that you want a re- to be in a relationship with me, not just that you want to be in a relationship. Yeah. Because. Yeah, if you're like, I'm going to tick off this list and then I can be in a relationship, that's one thing. But if you're just being in a relationship with the first person that says, me, you know. Yeah, yeah. Be picky as well. I mean, as yeah. much as you can be as such, for sure. But having said all of this, I think about, you know, the person that rejected me as such. Like, um, she didn't necessarily have those things. Like, he wouldn't have probably supported me like that. So it's probably a good, a good... Yeah, he was probably for a good reason that was like, look, I can't do this right now. Yeah. And he didn't, which is actually... Amazing. So maybe he's actually the goodie in this story. (laughs) 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 Alright. Okay, now let's go through the the second question and the longer one. Obviously we've covered a lot of it already, but like I think like there are individual little bits there that we can still Okay, so part one. If you have mental health issues that mean dating you will involve a lot of emotional labour for your partner, should you date or should you stay celibate? I think going settle a bit is a bit... That also sends a message that people with mental health issues can't be in relationships. Yes, which like, is not... No. no. So, no, no you just don't. No. But there are ways of doing it, which I guess comes to the next part, which is, if you want to date, how do you be open about your issues as early as possible without scaring away potential partners? I've been fairly lucky in that, that people have told me straight away and I was enamored with them so much that I just did all of my own Google research, basically. And I went to some forums about certain conditions and learned about it a lot myself, which was actually extremely eye-opening because sometimes you hear of a diagnosis, you know, and it's just like, oh, shit, you know, it's the scariest thing ever, you know. But obviously, as as, as well as if you could perhaps already send them certain resources because you probably have researched them yourself, you know. In my case, it was ADHD, you know, and... and uh, and and it was yeah I was just very very keen to learn about and learn different ways of how can individual sort of deal with that and that was uh, yeah absolutely kind of fascinating. this is interesting because I actually did exactly the same thing um, with someone I like I googled yeah like what does it mean if someone you love has depression like how does someone with depression relate to their friends relate to their family like what, what how can you support this person and also how can you make sure that you're not like supporting them to detriment of your own health and I did a lot of this online research as well so and there's some incredible Facebook groups as well yeah. that like literally can chat to people on that so I mean honestly like and like revealing anything important in a relationship it comes down to how much you trust the person and like that's not something we can really tell you yeah I, I wouldn't I wouldn't bring it up on a first date and you know to you it might be you might be terrified to reveal that stuff to that person they might be terrified to reveal I don't know, like the hairy nipples, or yeah, or which on which we will talk about in the future. But, but like with anyone I've actually really, really cared for, be it a romantic relationship or otherwise, finding out that stuff didn't make me like them less. It made me want to find out more about what that meant for them and what that would mean for me. And so it wasn't it wasn't a red flag per se. It was a thing of okay, I really like you, and I'm invested in this relationship of whatever kind, and therefore I'm going to figure out what this means for us. Yeah, like don't see it as a red flag necessarily. And if you're aware. Like, yeah, don't bring it up on a first date. Weird. But, like, once you trust that person as much as... And only you can tell that. Then mentioning it as a thing and then them being like, okay, what does this mean? And talk about how your mental illness manifests. What it might look like. What what does a bad day look like for you? Yeah. How do you want people to support you when you're having a bad day? How do you want people to treat you when you're having a good day? Because if you have particular triggers or things that piss you off or forms of, like... Uh, sympathy that make you annoyed or ones that you really like just let that person know absolutely yeah like basically the coping mechanisms that you've already assembled you know uh, be like look so this is the sort of this is the situation I hope we can work with this we'll work with this together as much as we can be this is what worked for me in the past I know yeah this is gonna be tough but like I will also cherish you you know yeah and yeah, I mean, as long as I guess you're not abusive, I mean, that's that is also a th- that is a thin line. That is, that sometimes that's what I was happen. about to say because, like, your mental illness is not an excuse for you to be abusive to your partner. Yeah. Like, yeah. but what you can do is say, sometimes I I don't know fly into these rages, and it's not about you, and I'm sorry if I do. And then they can say, you are not allowed to fly into a rage with me if you feel that it's coming on. Follow these steps, and you can come up with a process together of how. Like, for example, I used to have anger issues, like quite bad anger issues. And I used to, um, if I got really, really intense, just leave the room during a fight with my partner. I just stormed out and burst into tears. And he told me, this is my uh, ex-partner, he said, I really, for my own personal reasons, don't like it, can't handle it when someone storms out of a room, like just leave the room during an argument. 
And I was like, but I need you. I need my own space. I can't be in a space anymore. I'm going to end up like throwing the hot sauce against the wall. That happens at one time. It's fine. I dealt with it. It was a mess. A horse. Hot sauce. Hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know I'm from the countryside, but... <laughs> and so basically we came up with a system together where if I knew that I was in that state where I needed to leave the room, I just had to say, I need to leave the room right now, I'm sorry. And like, and so even if I was in this weird, hot, like stressed, angry place where all I could do was say, I need to leave the room right now, and then walk out, that was okay for him because that was me doing my best to communicate that thing to him and to acknowledge that he didn't like the alternative. And so like, it's... And so you don't know yet what your partner is going to be okay with and not okay with. And so it is going to be every single time figuring those things out together. Yeah. And maybe coming up with a certain reward system as well. You know, whether that's regular, you know, you know, once a month, that is the day where I'm, like, rewarding that person and whatnot, you know. I mean, obviously, this is tricky because you shouldn't have to feel like, you know, you have to pay the price for whatever it is that you're going through, you know, in, 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 in your mental health. But, um, no, but being thankful for supportive people in your life is important. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, should we go through that further? Um, okay. I feel like every sentence we're already like, but you know, but that's what we have for. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the next one is not a sentence. I guess it applies to anyone with a lot of baggage and privilege. How do you have a relationship when you know that your baggage will likely hurt your partner without it being an ex explosive, toxic, or patriarchal? Well, patriarchal, I mean, so as long as you're, I mean, not like does your mental health like negatively exhibit in misogyny because yeah. if that's the case that's probably misogyny not mental health yes and or you know seeing a a, 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 a psychotherapist for that would probably be a few stories yeah i mean i'm hoping yeah 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 but um, maybe that was just put in as like a if we can't be possible. healthy should we be celibate i would say no no i would say definitely <laughs> no cause... if you can't have a relationship without taking out all of your issues on your partner then i would take some time to yourself to learn strategies to not do that yes but it seems that like you would probably do that with your friends then as well right so just don't do that. that's actually a really good point because i think sometimes we unload on our partners in a way that we don't on our friends like our friends see our good side our nice side our happy side and they they therefore have no idea how like the partner is treated when they see your bad side you're at home side you're exhausted from work you're I can't be bothered to perform uh health anymore side and that's not an okay thing to do your partner isn't your like punching yeah bag. unconditional love shouldn't exist basically no. the condition has to be bare minimum decency and respect and if you're assuming that someone has unconditional love for you because they said they love you and they said they'd be there for you that's not an excuse to take out anything on someone yeah so I suppose you know as you don't have to be celibate unless you know I, I, you, your mental health issues are surrounded around the points where you are deliberately disrespectful to, to someone, right? Yeah. And if you, like, notice that you start justifying your bad behaviours in a certain way, then, like, talking, obviously, like, talking to a therapist or whatever is, like, a given, but that's important. I have seen those relationships from a side, you know, where someone is very very snappy at their partner you know and then but then they do give them a lot of gifts or something and now it probably sounds a little bit like that's what we recommend it but that's I still you know like I see that from the side I don't say anything but it's well I mean I have I have yeah. I do but yeah that is you can see that's no one gonna that's not gonna go anywhere and actually yeah that's not that's not okay and the thing I'm just scared of is that like for example, I, until quite recently, I probably still do, but it hasn't manifested. Like, I had a saviour complex in the sense that I, w there were certain people I met that had mental health issues that I felt a connection with. And I felt that, like, I was the one that understood them and I was the one that could save them. Oh, yeah, yeah, And, yeah. I, and like, through, <laughs> through, being, through being, like, intimate with me in whatever way, we could change their life they'll and better. they'll get better. And so, therefore, I could take this flack and take this stuff because I was part of this process of healing them. And it, it fucking exhausted me for... A very long time. It was incredibly bad for my mental health, my physical health, like all kinds of things, because I was desperate to save this person. And that's also on me. Like, it's on them for being not that great. <laughs> but it's also on me for having taken up this role that actually I didn't have the capacity to fulfill. And for trying to make them into this person that they want. Like, they... Yeah. they they, I wanted them to look at me and think Rowan is my saviour, and they didn't think that. And that, like that, that was I never asked them yeah. that, but I wanted that. Yeah. And so there's that as well. Like, make sure your partner is supporting you, 
not to the detriment of their own health and not because they have a misguided idea of yeah. what's going to happen from it? Again, from my reading a lot about, well, again, this was, in this case, was ADHD, but I've uh, read a bit on Asperger's, Asperger's, Asperger, mm. um, is that the, 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 of the partners, I mean, I mean, that was really, really awesome and encouraging. They're like, oh, we've been together for like 40 years. And all the time when I see like my partner, you know, I don't know, if they're having a fit or something, you probably just go like, oh, is it, is it, is this like a, a mental illness thing? Like, or, or, or like, you know, they're just super forgetful and haven't done a certain thing to go, is this an ADHD thing, you know, like, and so basically, or they like to take the mic as well, they find ways to laugh about it, which is really nice, and mm. not just the, the partner, the two of them together, you know, so yeah, basically there's lots of hope, although we're kind of describing a lot of, like, kind of somewhat negative scenarios, you know, people stay together for decades, and yeah. extremely happy, and it's fine, and when people find the one, and both of them, you can tell that both of them are working on a certain, on this issue, there's not just the one or the other working on it, then it's absolutely fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's just about coming up with systems that work for you and your partner. There yeah. isn't a one size fits all on this. Yeah, like... but that, you have to stay very disciplined. With yeah, those. yeah, and definitely. Check, literally, even if it involves at nine thirty, I'm checking every day on nine thirty. I am checking as to how I did at those particular points, or even I was like, yeah, seven p.m. I write down what went well today and what didn't. Like literally, even it has to be as as disciplined as that. I think it's worth it. Yeah. What are your triggers? What are your partner's triggers? What yeah, if we what works for you? Every night, being like, okay, so today, what worked in terms of like the mental health stuff? You know, what didn't? Um, I get why this can work. yeah, and I get why this can be daunting when like on you know on the lookout for a new partner because yeah, you, of course you don't want to have like second date at the cinema. By the way, here are my triggers, but. Yeah, I think it's something that you open up to. Like, I don't know, like, for me, like, the more dates I have, the more I open up about things that are emotionally hard for me in a general sense. And if one of the things that's emotionally hard for you is a mental illness, then that will hopefully naturally fall into the conversation at some point and you'll be able to see how they relate to that yeah. already. They might have their own experiences. Like, we've just shown our own experiences that they can engage with. And if they are immediately like, I can't handle that, then you know straight away. Yeah. But don't lie. Don't make it seem like it's less hard than it is if you have certain things that are really difficult to handle in your own personality and you recognize them don't minimize them and talk like be open about how they how they look because yeah that's the only way play someone can, ugh, the only way someone can have proper consent to a situation yeah yeah is there anything was... when's the right time to bring up your issues when dating i guess i just did that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay how do i make like beyonce and be crazy in love who are we? <laughs> I don't know, but um, I mean, yeah, it can be really hot. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, be open, be honest, trust that. Like when you like that, you know when to open up to someone. I'm not saying it'll always work. I've had people in my life who I've opened up to, and it turned out they weren't there for me. And also, I'm sure that's happened to other people. But there's also yeah. been times that I've told people about my own mental illness problems, and they've been super there for me. And it's made our relationship incredibly strong. So yeah, have some humor about it. You know, like, yeah. I mean. You're great in this and this and this and this way, but something's gone a bit funny. And, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and like, you know, I, mean, I don't know. I used to be a stand up comedian and uh, we did a comedy set about depression. Um, and it went terribly. Like, it didn't work at all. The audience did not like it. It turns out they're not interested in making jokes about someone else's depression. But for us, it was very cathartic. So, you know, there, yeah, making light of it for your own benefit can also be a good thing. Yes. I'm looking that I should be hunching, hunching less. So oh, I'm God, I'm probably also, like, I think it's these chairs. I was like, because they're squeaking. Sorry about the squeaking. Yeah, sorry about the squeaking. It's going to get better. Right, should we move on? And I'm going to check that everything is kind oh, of Oh, should I do the, the shout out? Well. Okay. Which one? They were like, hello, if you've just tuned in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Awesome, awesome. Hello, if you've just tuned in, this is Anarcho Agony Aunt with Rowan and Marianne. We answer your questions anonymously on love, lust, sex, relationships, dating other things yeah i think it's all looking good yeah it's so black on here i think sadly you were both wearing really black as well like, your your head is kind of floating <laughs> yeah we didn't discuss this in advance so we're no, both in black no. with the black background and the black chairs no but but i think it's all looking my hair looks shiny Hi, viewers Woo -hoo! Hi. thank you hello <laughs> hi mom <laughs> <laughs> okay okay so question number two that's the titties one. We skip that one for now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, see, maybe we can get like a screen view of the later ones. Okay. Oh, should we go to the knee? That, yeah, that's the next one. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, it kind of relates, actually. I mean, in the sense that all of our questions do. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Can ugly anarchists need any ca- oh, look, I'm gonna start again because that was terrible. Okay, from now. Can ugly anarchist neat date? Neat here means not in education, employment, or training. Is it possible to be of interest to someone or have a connection when you have nothing good going on for you in your life, plus have niche political, philosophical, and reading interests? I understand no one is entitled to dates and no one should have to suffer a boring and unappealing scrub. You're so full of shit, mate. And that was a very cute phrase. Scrub. I mean, sure, but like... I like it. I just don't believe that that person is... I mean, someone that can formulate the question so nicely and be so self-aware of their own, whatever, shortcomings, even if they're that. Um, I think you're probably absolutely fine. I think you're completely downgrading yourself. And also, my God, you also, I'm going to make a guess and say that you're probably... Um, you're probably working class or you're like definitely not posh because like the amount of people that I know that are not in education, employment or training, yeah. but they somehow manage to like project that into a full fledged like, oh, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just saving the world now or anything. You know, Wait, is, just, is like, it me? No, I'm, I'm not in education, you employment are. or training, but you are. I don't get paid. No, but you. But that is still a job, and also you're training, and also you're applying for for okay. PhD and okay. all of that stuff. No, I imagine this is someone who really, really thinks that like they don't have much going on or something. Mm. I mean, so yeah, the amount of poshos you see all the time that literally basically go from a party to a party or something and do fuck all, and you know, but they somehow manage to project that or like converse that, convert that into into a lifestyle. Um, you think this is one of them? Meaningful. No, I think it's the opposite. Okay, good, that's what no, I was gonna say. Okay, no, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm gonna make a guess and say that you're like definitely not posh okay. because you're so, you're so angry with yourself that you are not in those things. Like as good an mm. would, as good an arcos will probably be like, hey, mate, fuck the system. <laughs> like you don't have to be in those things. I mean, obviously though ourselves, we also have like big like material anxieties and you know, do you, you think I want to do the stuff that I do, like, you know, the, the employment or even the hustling or Twitter stuff. Like most of the time, not, not really. It's just like, that will be the only way to earn some money and that. So first of all, I would really, I don't know, I'm sure you have, like, even if this passions are, like, I don't know, video games or whatnot, there's so much to do with that. Also, you kind of, you literally said that you have, like, niche, like, pil- political and philosophical yeah. interest, which makes me think you actually have something quite precise and specific totally. to share with someone. And a niche is a niche, not because it's one person, but because it's several people. Like, I don't know what the niche is, but if it's, like, I don't know, anarchist philosophy, there's a group for that. Oof. If it's, and like... I will definitely... Mate, if yeah. I know someone and someone will just tell me a load of things on that on that topic, I'll be like, Yeah. Yeah, we're meeting again. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, you, you, you clearly are well-read and, like, have interests. So you're not, like... And you say you're boring and unappealing but you've also said you have these interests like boring to who boring to like a wall street normie maybe but you know who wants them anyway apart from Maryam. <laughs> so you're definitely downplaying yourself 100 percent. so i think if anything that is the issue that was probably not getting you the yeah the hookups or whatnot or the relationships is like you clearly just have confidence issues and I mean, again, we suffer from that, and I've, we definitely addressed it in previous episodes, the way that we would advise for someone to take those first steps towards ditching that whole bullshit, because, sadly, uh, and I know that's a bit of a critique that we have actually received, well, it wasn't really a critique, but being like, hey, they're kind of only describing a certain particular way of, of, of dating or being masculine or whatnot, which does involve confidence or something. But sure. I suppose our particular experience has, has found that if someone is really not confident that we have to do a lot of the work to make them feel that, and after a certain while, it does become a bit boring. <laughs> it, it becomes hard work trying to keep someone's confidence up all the time, unfortunately. Yeah. And like maybe we're that just like lazy assholes, but <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. Like you say, you like self-describe as ugly and boring and unappealing. Like a lot of those things can be fixed by like posture, aesthetic. Like I'm not like if you're like fucking. I don't know, the ugliest man in the world, I'm assuming you're male, you didn't say, Yeah. yeah. then, like, sure, that's going to make it harder. It's not going to make it impossible. Ugly people date all the time. I'm constantly looking on the street and being like, wow, really? (laughs) But, yeah, you know, like... No, but it's a thing. Aesthetics are a thing. Like, look, and people look, have tastes. Are a thing, like, some sure. yeah, people yeah. like totally different types of people. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. and I know that sounds like I'm your mum being like, you'll find the right girl. But you will? Yeah. Like... 
Yeah, again, like where I work um, and my day job, I see tens of thousands of people every day. And really, again, lots of couples, lots of families and that. And yeah, you see people from of all stripes really in, in, in incredible yeah. relationships and that. And there, there was definitely hope for that. But again, perhaps you would want to look into some of our previous uh, uh, episodes in terms of like, how to get the second or third um, yeah. date, you know, even the first one, you know. So there, even if you want to start with online dating, there are so many little tips. Honestly, if you would just put in your bio, I'm into like political philosophy. I'd be like, yes, mate. Yeah, <laughs> and like small stuff like personal hygiene, like be clean, smell good, wear jeans that fit, woolly jumper, woolly jumpers, and then you know, <laughs> no, but that's like. Just us. Doesn't have to be that. But the, the clean but and clothes that fit thing is kind of a good thing. Yeah. Like everyone likes clean people. Well, you see, well, again, oh, I've run out way too many crusties. Yeah, that's, that's true. I'm a case. snob. I'm a snob. <laughs> if you're a crusty a punk, then you have a different set of rules to follow that I yes. cannot relate to. Yeah, but that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, we also, we have to stress this, we also have very different tastes. You know, when we say, I think, look, if we go basics, our personal hygiene and fit the clothes, like, yeah. that's, that's, that's pretty much that's all we have in basic. common. Yeah, everything else. <laughs> Beyond <both> that. <laughs> what hair, what dr- everything, mm-hmm. that's very, very different. Yeah. Um, but, which, but like, yeah, boring and unappealing, but you clearly have these interesting do interests. Yeah. Like, obviously, there is a way of talking about your interests that doesn't make you come off like a mansplainer. Like, again, I'm assuming you're a dude. I'm sorry you didn't put it in your answer. And so if we've got that wrong, I apologies. But like, I, I love being told things I don't know. Like, I love someone telling me stuff. I don't love it if they're a smug cunt about it. But I do love it if I'm like, actually, I don't know about this. Let me know. And they, like, engage about it and t- tell me something new. I remember that person. Yeah. And, mate, like, you found us somehow, meaning you're in, like, leftist circles, meaning you probably have read a lot on the news. Yeah, I'm a huge politician. He said he's an anarch- anarchist, I think, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Like, I don't know what you're saying then. And the whole, like, education, employment, or training, like, these are, and this is probably the most anarchical, yeah, but, like, these, this is nothing. Yeah. Honestly, these are not important that is literally not on my criteria of dating I feel someone like it's the at sort all. Of term that Daily Mail would come up with. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like, ha- like, I cannot think of a single friend I have who is in full time work. I mean, I can, I can. Oh, okay, one person. I can think of one person. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that one sure. person, no, I, I know more than one. really. <laughs> oh come on. Yes, yes, we don't have to. Okay, now, but, but the point is, <laughs> in the anarcho scene, and I'm assuming you're in the anarcho scene, and if you're not, then maybe that's a good place to start. If you're an anarchist who isn't in the anarcho scene, then join the anarcho scene because it's plenty, but plenty in terms of like having insecurities about being neat, plenty of people are not in education, employment, or training. Yeah, and yet we won't necessarily. You know, we wouldn't necessarily recommend the love. No, but I wouldn't recommend... They wouldn't, have their own kinks. So but also, I wouldn't say that, like, for me, having a full-time job is a pl- in the plus column of me finding someone desirable. Sure. Like, that's not what I look for. No, sure, sure, sure. Like, more, I'm more interested in, I guess, what kind of, like, you know, activism they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say how good they're in the bed. Oh, right, I see that. That was a misleading. By the way, segueing to the fact if you're good in bed, mm-hmm. mate, that's it. And if you're not, that's it's it. all learnable. It's fucking yeah, learnable. Yeah. And girls talk, man. You will be known yeah. as the good one. Yeah. You will be in the legends about that. Yeah, if you give us lots of money in our coffee thing, we'll tell people. That was a joke. Don't that was a that. joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can talk. We're one thin year. I would be going to so. <laughs> No, but yeah. Being a neat, if you're like in an arc scene, not a fucking issue. Yeah, but it also seems you, like you're really self aware. However, I will say that perhaps you do want to have that certain structure because, like, I have found whenever I was you know, unemployed or even on the dull, those periods of my life, I was really depressed mm-hmm. and really sad and fucking hated it. Yeah, me too. And, and um, so, so again, even if, you, if you're in a depressive sort of spot in your life, it might be because of that, because you just don't have something to get up to, in the, get up for in the morning. And that can be definitely so sorry, not necessarily to be all like, oh, you have to have like a job for that. But yeah, we have like, to have a purpose, right? Like, I, I don't have a job per se now, but I have a purpose and that's good for me. Mm. So, yeah. But... But yeah, if you're thinking about what a future partner wants, that shouldn't really put people off. No. I wouldn't think. No. Yeah, but definitely, yeah. You have your passion, and also, 
gain some confidence. If that means getting involved in employment, education, or training, then so be it. I guess you have to. Or get a project, get an get an activist thing, get a demo that you do, organize an event. Like there's so many ways yeah, of so doing many stuff and engaging and meeting people. It's kind of actually more than ever now. London is really, really like just bursting yeah. with lots of. Oh, well, that's London. I'm sorry. Maybe. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry, true. Being lo- super London central. But maybe it's also true of other places. It'd be interesting to find out. Yeah, I felt really, really proud today being like, it's 8 p.m. GMT, as in people know. That is true, though. We also watch it. Hello, any international fans? Let us know if you're watching from somewhere not London. Yeah, that would be nice. (laughs) Yeah. All right, kiddos, next one. And then you roll up, I check how things are going. Wait, yeah, I need to find my lighter. Because I thought I took it out of my bag and prep. I did, I did. Okay, I found my lighter. Okay, okay. Um, Is it okay if I nick a pop again? Oh, should I? Yeah, you can have a puff. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just mm. a bit annoying like that. Not even. Sorry, sorry mum. Um, okay, so I'm going to check on certain things. Again, I'm okay. crouching. I need to... Hello, if you're just oh. tuning in, this is Anarcho Agony Aunts with Rowan and Mariam, previously called NHS for Lefties, before someone... Eight viewers. What the hell, guys? Two people... <sighs> I mean, thank us. you, eight, oh, yes, thank for you. staying with us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but two people dropped us. Stop going. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. There's literally nothing else happening on Monday night. It's raining in in <laughs> London, possibly everywhere. I wonder if I can look. I'm just gonna go on Periscope quickly and like retweet this. Retweet us. Something is happening. Can you do that? Yeah. So sorry, it's a bit of a shorter break. Break. Okay, what? I'm gonna do something. What am I gonna do? Uh, I can think of a joke. I can think of a joke. Uh, did I already do the how many anarchists does it take to change the light bulb joke? No, go for it. How many anarchists does it take to change the light bulb? Put your phone in the fridge and I'll tell you. Because anarchists don't say anything important without security culture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a wanky joke. That was pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, actually. <laughs> okay, what's another lefty right. joke? Okay, so I'm going to... Wait, how do I... What are you... I'm tweeting it? Oh, you're tweeting the video. I don't know any other lefty jokes. Uh, no, no, okay, apologies. I'm going to just check it there quickly. Yeah, okay. Let's go, let's go share. Ooh, the oh, God, I have a gap in my friend. You could have told me that. I look like Tintin. <laughs> How do I retweet this? I don't know. I should. Know, I used to know this, but there's nine people now. So oh, like, hello, okay. no, hello, no, number nine, number teen nine thousandth us. viewer that we've just got. Cause they don't know how many people are watching. They think we've got thousands. Yes, we should probably not say. No, to be fair, on on YouTube we had what like our account was about 130 hours watched, which is really awesome. Yeah, well done for getting the legwork. Okay, what's next? Oh, fuck me. Right, that's me. Um, hmm. I feel like we're going really quickly today. No, man. Like, we're 45 minutes. Are we? <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's a porn one. Okay. 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 Strap, strap in or strap up? Strap on. Strap on. <laughs> Prepare. No, this is strap really on your strap actually. on. Okay. Do you have any tips slash thoughts on how to reduce one's porn consumption? How to, for want of a better word, decolonize one's libido and fantasies from the ways that porn and all those structures them? And I just want to add this bit because it's part of the same thing. Also, keep it up. I've never really seen the point of the whole YouTuber thing before. I never got why anyone would want to watch it. But watching your stuff, I was like, ah, now this. This I get the appeal of. So sorry, I just wanted to add that because thank you so much. You don't know how much this means to us. It honestly really makes don't. our day. Every time, like, Marianne yes. gets one of the things and she sends it to me and we both do, like, crying love emojis and it's the whole thing. But it really is. Yeah, it's, it's so nice. Because you have, not, like, for us, I don't know, for me personally, like demystifying ourselves like this and talking about this, yeah, it's it guts, like, and and it is a f- embarrassing a lot of the time. And we're putting ourselves out there for a lot of critique from also like the feminist scene and stuff yes, for like 100%. being quite n- not edgy, but like saying yeah. stuff that isn't you know k- kosher. Like, or there was a there was like an anti-fascist meeting, right, where we opened up that we're doing this, and one person was like, "Wait, what?" Wow, you're doing something for dudes? How the fuck is that feminist? You're teaching people how to hit on people? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, literally, you're teaching people how to hit on people? What the fuck? And they were quite annoyed with us for recognising that lefties actually, like, dating. 
thing. But like we are a thing, and that that should be in like a not misogynistic way. And I think we're sort of giving um, an advice of how to do it in the right way. Yeah, literally, like how to date and not be a dick. I feel like that's generally a good thing. That's a fucking political project, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, that was interesting feedback we got on the other end of the spectrum. Again, very brave question. Thank you so yes. much for sending this in. Do you want to start? Um, just, shall we do it again? Because we just had a whole yeah, deviation. Sorry, yeah, yeah. And it's a short. Do you have any tips or thoughts on how to reduce his, what, how to reduce one's porn consumption? How to, for want of a better word, decolonize one's libido and fantasies from the way that porn and all that structures them? Right. So first of all, we watch porn. It's a thing. I don't know. Not I together. Most, yeah. No, no, no. I think we had a conversation about that. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> um. And so I think it's okay to demystify that. Again, we, I, I think you follow a few on Instagram. I follow a few like of my favorite porn stars on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I actually learn a lot from them on the industry. I also, you know, really, really support the, you know, the the, the attempts to 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 organize those those particular industries. Because yes, yes, let's be honest, there is a lo- like shit lots of fucking exploitation there, and, and and there is a good reason why someone would feel like they're not a good feminist if they watch porn. Yeah, which sounds like where you're coming from, because I guess one of the questions I have that you can't really answer is, why? Why do you want to stop watching porn? Because I don't necessarily know that I necessarily want to advise you on how to stop watching porn, but I, we, I could be more comfortable advising you on how to watch porn in an ethical way. Yes, and I suppose perhaps the person is implying uh, that they watch porn that is not... That I don't want That's like to... less ethical. Well, yes. Okay. So there are two, two, I think, okay. So to me, as a good Marxist, to me, the, these are, sorry, can I nix that cigarette again? There are Do two it. I'm just checking my mic because right? I keep losing it. So for it. instance, I was going to say, as a good Marxist, I was going to be like, look, it really doesn't matter what the porn depicts necessarily, but just look at the modes of production, right? So look whether the workers are... I, 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 don't, I don't actually agree with that. No, I, I actually do. I never thought about what the porn depicts as being the issue. So that's very interesting. We'll get that next. Well, I wonder. So I mean, but again, the porn... Okay, so, so basically, because I, I thought, you know, as long as it is, you know, the, all the actors are uh, under, you know, um, are paid with good wages and everyone's consensual, no one's being coerced, there are proper contracts, there's proper consent, you know, all of that stuff, which I think um, in some of the, like, United States, for instance, you know, there's a, a big culture around porn, well, uh, adult performers, um, and, and so it doesn't really matter what it de- de- depicts as long as people are sort of consenting for that. So I sort of, and uh, that's what I was going to advise while I was writing up my notes. And yet, I thought, I don't think that's enough. Sadly, I think if there are certain, and I know this is probably where you disagree, or, or I don't know, maybe this is the conversation to be had as such, but I think there are certain, well, definitely the far end of it, it's definitely, of course, bad, but like, there are certain, uh, I suppose, uh, lines that are getting crossed where, um, where if consent is, is really intensely violated in that depiction, uh, not in the sort of BDSM question that we had. And I think, I don't know, perhaps that is reproducing a certain message that is not. Do you mean obvious. that, like, if, like, even if both actors are consenting, if there was a rape scene, for example, do you mean that? Yeah. I would probably go as far as that. Like, unless the rape scene sort of implies that this is a kink. Because, okay, this is really interesting, because in the last month I've joined this Facebook group called Oops, That's My Kink. And it's really interesting, because a lot of people there engage in their own sex life in what they call CN... Wait, CNC, consensual non-consent. And they do it with their partners, and they're like, this is my kink, and this turns me on, but the whole point is that it's consensual non-consent. And... So you've done your research, but <laughs> well, I just I'm just part of this. And it's actually really, by the way, if you have any questions about like kink, sexual kinks, and like what's like too much, or whatever, it's actually a really like supportive and cool Facebook group, and I would actually recommend joining it because I don't ask any questions, but just reading the answers, it's really cool. But I wonder if there's a difference, for example, between me and my partner doing consensual on consent, and me as a dude with no feminist politics watching a rape scene for porn and jacking off. Even if, even if both those actors are unionised and fully consenting, if I don't have a feminist analysis behind me, 
I think it's an that, issue. Like, that's the issue, yeah. right? And, like, the performers that are putting that, um, I suppose, that content... Yeah, they don't necessarily know their audience. Yet, I want to sort of extend this to other mediums. Because, again, like, porn is very, very easy to sort of describe as just... Like, that's the issue. Like, I'm thinking, again, like, bringing back to my home turf, like, video games, right? So everyone always accuses that the sort of violence that happens in video games then gets reproduced in real life, especially if someone who is already violent is looking at that content as such. I would argue that, you know, if, if someone already has... Again, that happens in film all the time, you know, so already, what, what are we talking about? Well, we only talk about video games yes. and porn or something, right? Happens in, 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 in other Everything, videos yeah. all the time. So I think it's really important to sort of demystify that this is just a, a porn thing. You know, there are rape scenes in, in films all yeah. the time. This is just that it happens to be one particular clip in one partic- with a bit more nudity. I get the point that that... In porn, it's explicitly that's the reason why you're watching it, right? Yeah. Whereas in Game of Thrones, we all say we're watching it for the dragons, but a lot of people are watching it for the tits with like, oh, it's a bit non-consensual, you know. I remember that was one of the issues for me with the Game of Thrones. Yeah, me too. I didn't watch it. I like, I refused to watch it for the first four years out of like a feminist principle of not yeah. watching these rape scenes. And then yeah, I watched it and loved it because you know I love dragons. Right. But like, it, yeah, it was a thing for me, like because it didn't need to be there. Like, and what? Yeah. Yeah. My question, in a kind of slightly... I'm so I, I, yeah, I, okay, I, sorry, I, finish no, your no, thing. No, 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 sorry, I'll just... I guess I suppose I'll stick... I will, per, I will probably stick to... You know, as a good Marxist, that would be like, you know, the content doesn't matter or would not, like, really... Well, I mean, I think probably Marxists would also agree that content somewhat matters. But um, that as long as modes of production are fine, doesn't matter what sort of fantasy it is selling, yet I will ascribe a certain... And, I mean, the line is super thin, right? Because, again... Um, it could be really kinky or it could be you know the stuff that we described in BDSM where someone is like sort of for a moment they like the of the idea of like n- no meaning yes again please go back to that yes so we described that very more much in we detail. have a big consent framework around that Absolutely. don't get us wrong yeah yeah, yeah. Don't, <laughs> just think we, um, we don't rape someone that thing. makes you a rapist yeah exactly and so if that is your sort of only upset out of curiosity if you watch that like that's fine I mean again I would probably argue that that is not in the perfect world we wouldn't have those depictions you know I have a question for you actually that I mean might make me come across as a bit weird or something but like okay so in the in porn you you identify with a person right one of the two people or whatever (laughs) is there a difference like, like in terms of ethics between identifying with the rapist and identifying with the r- raped person? That's a heavy crime. <laughs> because, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real with you right now, humble viewers. <laughs> we should have put trigger warnings. Yeah, we're going to put trigger oh, warnings no. on the YouTube videos. Yeah. Trigger warning, discussion of rape. Sorry, that's late. We'll do it on the YouTube videos. But I watch rape-ish porn because I identify with the rape-ish person. Is that a different thing? Or in terms of ethics, to if I watch porn and I identify with the rapist. I watch really vanilla porn! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just cu- I'm actually just curious now, like, because I'm like listening to what you're saying and I completely agree in one respect, but then like like I said, with this whole kink community where people have these like consensual non consent scenarios, and I don't think there's anything wrong with acting out a consensual non consent with your partner. Yeah. Like Okay, okay. Interestingly, okay, actually, okay, I have a caveat. I have a okay, caveat. Go on, go on, go on. My last caveat is when I do watch uh, the slightly more non consensual stuff on porn, um, I only do it in hentai because it's cartoons. Because even though the means of the production and everything, blah, blah, right. blah, I still can't watch a real live woman in that scenario. But with like a cartoon, I can. And I don't know if that's just me justifying to myself my yeah. like problematic habits, and maybe it is. Right. But it's a thing, like, I only, like, yeah, I watch like dubious consent hentai and I identify with the woman in that and I just wonder what okay so I think rather than addressing and I'm probably gonna somehow I don't know dodge this um, <laughs> in a, in a pro- I'm also co- sort of coming back to to video games and thinking like I have a lot of critique of political games right because I think sometimes they just like take a particular struggle and then they capitalize on it like for instance Papers Please uh, which is a which is a video game about uh, borders and I think the the creator was just you know ripping off a particular struggle and never talked about it and that was it I, I read would... Mariam's article about that on Medium it's very good okay. but basically I think 
yes, I think from my politics, I would ascribe to people that are creating that sort of content to always link and to always talk about uh, real issues that women face in that, bring it back to that, and being like, and, and um, um, be like, okay, if you have a particular, I suppose, I don't know, king that you require this particular content to be... I always, always bring it back to this is, this is... No, yeah, no, I'm gonna say no. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Of any kind? I just... I just think it's is. I just think it's basically. I was gonna prepare the whole other half of the answering this question, where I was basically gonna talk about um, what I learned from porn and about pleasure, and and I think we'll maybe we'll get to that. Uh, but I think porn is way way more useful is to learn and to learn about good, basically how to please someone. And I think. Do you that think is, you that can learn about that from from porn? Yeah. 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 Okay, I just have my so so basically just to end on yeah. that as such. Um, yeah, as long as again the the creation of a particular product is 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 very much meshed with certain struggles that people are overcoming, then perhaps a certain educational way of putting it out there is is okay. But um, or perhaps if it's framed as also consensual, not consensual mm-hmm. sort of thing. If it is referred to as as a kink, then that's fine. But um, and that the consent is like paramount. Yes, like that is yes, yes. That that is very much part of the conversation. Or the fact that we're trying to educate people against that needs to be part of the conversation because I just don't think that stuff needs to be glamorized. Like I just and actually yeah. I just like it's glamorized because it's not glamorized. It's fucking you know darkened. Well, interestingly, I just ended up agreeing with you and not agreeing with me throughout my own um, comparison. My head. Okay, so um, trigger warning, uh, pedophilia. I was thinking, like, I just made this kind of justification to myself that I get, like, aroused by, like, watching, like, semi-rapish scenes, right? But actually, I would not think it was okay that someone watched, for example, hentai child porn as a, like, consensual way of watching child porn. I would not think that was okay. Yeah. So, and that's that's a crime, and rape is a crime. Yeah. So actually, there is not no... Just in the sort of, like, state way. We don't. No, but in the, like, cons. things that are fucking not okay yeah. and don't fucking do them, you scumbag kind yeah. of way. So actually, I maybe take back what... I mean, not what I said earlier, but what I was kind of musing earlier and actually agree with you in that there isn't a justification for it because you're still giving a place for accepting a pleasure or something that should not be a pleasure and in fact we should be putting effort into unlearning that yeah like if we're unlearning everything else bad we're trying to unlearn racism sexism homophobia all the things we yeah. should be putting effort into unlearning but again, non-consensual sexual things uh, okay, but again like i mean this doesn't shouldn't just stop there because i mean when we're talking you know we're talking i don't know i don't know jesus christ like child abuse and and and, and rape but also there's a lot of just like a porn well, most the vast majority of it right where the dude is the only one special, right? Yes. Or, I mean, or, yes. or in general, there's just like general sexism there, right? Yeah. And that's that's like ninety five, well, ninety well, so many percents of it, right? So I mean, again, we're basically talking about overhauling the, the porn, porn industry, industry, right? And 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 that is a very very tough ask. Again, there's the whole conversation about this is the fantasy and this is not something that not anything at all. I would. I would be recreating in real life. I mean, I get fucking no. I love shooting people on video games. Yeah. I love just their brains exploding. Mortal Kombat to me, like the fucking gory Mortal Kombat part is like great. I love it. Would I do that in real life? So again, like basically to the mis- it's not just yeah. it's not just a conversation about like sexual things in porn as a trigger and as terrible that is for for a lot of people. But this sort of depiction of just bad things that should be happening happen in 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 all culture all the time. I mean, we should tell people to be grown ups and to know the difference between what you watch on your computer and what you do in so real life. You need to sort out your politics beforehand. Right? Yes, so that's, that's basically what we're saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, but that was the sort of comparison with video games. Like, yeah, a lot of the time the the violence like the but people that already have like a streak or like or their problems with their mental health or whatnot that they, they will probably will then go on and do that shooting but it's not the games that have made them done it because most of the time and look pretty much everyone watches porn uh, does that mean that we're worse in real life like no it doesn't no no what so. i want to do in the bedroom is not the same thing as what i watch in porn yes like, absolutely and, and i think that's true of a lot of people 100 percent. yeah 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 so even if we watch that that doesn't mean that we will then be doing those things in real life. The, is is it? Do, 
But I also do think there's more responsibility in porn, which is kind of a question I uh, posed to you earlier, with who is the act and who is a passive participant and if you're watching and you're getting off and being the active participant I like in terms of like the one who is doing the more potentially dubious consent things I think you need to take a close fucking look at yourself and why those behaviors are turning on not in a king shaming way doms are no, fine consent absolutely. is good yeah, yeah, yeah. but in a like are you able to make that detachment are your feminist politics good enough to justify this detachment and if they're and not then are you only are you only wanting to hurt that person or are you wanting to hurt them with their own consent yeah are you wanting to hurt them because they want to be hurted and yeah. they get off on it yeah because if you don't want to like turn your partner on during sex you shouldn't be having sex yes 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 <laughs> yes That's really and in terms of if you want to stop watching porn which was your actual question <laughs> okay I don't think that's necessarily it. I think there's so much like vanilla. Okay, so this is kind of going back to what I was gonna. I sort of prepped to talk about mm. um, um, what I find porn useful for is 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 learning about certain techniques, learning to. And again, there's so much, you know, there's there are so many resources for that, and learning how to. Please, again, I know it's super subjective. You know, whatever that person likes, that bit them with in that way is different from another of course but there are general general techniques and uh, it can be really really educational and i think yeah what again so going back to what you said like if you don't want to pleasure your partner you shouldn't be having sex i think it could be an incredible resource sometimes to learn to pressure to pleasure the other and uh there, there are some great resources for that, and if one can, you know, if one can look into that, then I, I only, I only congratulate them as such. And there is like, obviously, you, you probably know there is feminist porn available. Yes. So and I it. mean, the problem, I mean, not the problem, the good thing for in terms of like ethics and like, you know, the Marxist perspective is that it's behind a paywall. So that's good. If you can afford that, then do that. Or just even like... And there are also a lot of porn stars and stuff who do put stuff on for free and to, like, they have their own web pages and their own, like, informed consent around yeah, what they're yeah. doing. Or you hype them up on social media and yeah. stuff like that, you know? Like, when I say hype them up, I mean, like, I don't know, follow, you don't have to like, because obviously that's a bit... Difficult. But, like, I do on Instagram and I, I like my favourite yeah, porn star stuff on Instagram. Again, it's easy for us sort of women to like... That sure. Sort of stuff. If a dude likes porn star, they are getting looked at. But actually, porn like, porn. if you like the... If you follow the feminist porn st- stars and like sex workers and people on social media they talk a lot about how to be a good feminist and also be like a client in whichever way that is and yeah like yeah sorry if this was a bit about us trying to figure this out with you yeah but i mean yeah we guess we talked about more my my porn this is my therapy session no but but again like i think what's really successful about this project as well is just like that we yeah we're here trying to figure this out yeah, together with you. Obviously, we, we would like to think that we're giving certain informative ad, uh, advice, and actually, that's the sort of feedback we've received. But with a lot of those themes, yeah, it is very difficult to talk about them in the sort of milieus that we are in. Cause yeah. Straight away, people do get very, very animated a lot of the time for a fucking good yes. reason. Yes. For a fucking good reason. Like, women are assaulted and abused and treated like All shit left, time. right, and center. All the time. And they have absolute every right to be, like, suspicious and all of the things about this, which is also why we're doing the services, because we feel we have the emotional like energy right now to yes. answer these questions yes like, whereas many people fucking don't for a good reason absolutely yeah. fucking fine yes and also by the way I just feel like I'm really sorry to any listeners who felt like triggered by anything I just said because I realised I went to quite a dark place kind of by accident and I just want to apologise and we will be putting trigger warnings on this video if when we put it on YouTube just wanted to put it out there thank you yeah I mean because that was not where I went to go there no. but I just ended up with that question I thought it was interesting I, like, I think so because I think a lot of women and men and other people also have I think those... you'd be surprised 100% yeah 100%. and also do join Oops That's My Kink on Facebook because it's a really interesting group for discussing these issues wait is that not the CNC is that something else that's um, it's, just a, it's just a kink group but a lot of people are, like, ask about like consensual non- non-consent and stuff they ask about like all different types of kinks and it's really cool in terms of stop watching porn I don't know, like... Is it because you, like... The best hangover cure, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I'm trying to get out of bed in the morning, I watch some porn, like... I just... Yeah, I don't think there's actual any... I mean, there that. can be an issue, like, if you are... Well, like, dude, is, it, is it a dude? I can't remember. If you're, we assume, yeah. sorry. We just if you're assume. a dude, uh, a cis dude, and you're finding it hard uh, orgasming during sex with your partner because of porn, that might be a reason to take a break. Like, um, but then, no, but okay, but then this is where I would bring back, like, 
just refrain to the, watch porn, but watch a porn that will make your partner orgasm quicker yeah. than you will, for fuck's sakes. Mate, it's not that fucking difficult. Honestly, there's so many amazing techniques. But, like, I don't come from penetrative sex. Well, I'm sure there are certain techniques that someone could look at if they were with you. I mean, they could, like, ways. whack her like a bullet down there at the same time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, like, surely you must have seen stuff in pornography that you were like okay this this would probably make me go up. I know I've tried a lot of the stuff though like because like me and my one of my one of my ex-partners <laughs> <laughs> we like tried for ages to like practice squatting to see if like I could do it no that's a myth and, like, man no it's not a myth oh. you're mistaken um <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry <laughs> Apparently, like, way more women are, like, uh, cis women are able to it's squirt pee. than... It's pee. It's not pee. It's, it's pee, not man. pee. Okay, don't ask us about squirting, because this is really <laughs> Sometimes it's pee, but it's not always pee. Because it's a different gland, and there's, like, a certain way of doing it. And, like, Teen Vogue, by the way, has really good articles on, like, how to squirt and stuff like this. Didn't work for me, but it worked for a lot of people. And a lot of people don't realise they can oh, do it, yeah. and it's a certain angle. So, anyway, that's... I think it's bullshit. It's not... Oh. Well, now I've completely showed that I'm not... Sorry, if someone wanted to date me just because of that, that's not... Yeah, well, me so neither, sorry. yeah. But, you know... I, I, I find your squirting girl. I'm holding out hope that I can one day squirt. I think it's bull... I fully, fully think it's bullshit. But people do. Again, I, I watched enough points to see that it's coming out from a particular hole. That's it's not the pee hole! It, ca- it just is. It just is. <laughs> it's urethra. Okay. It's urethra, man. But it's, it's a different liquid. It's actually really fascinating. There's some persons that I know that I've watched for, for years and years. Well, not that I've watched them, but I've seen that they have been like doing porn for four years and years and then one day they're like I'm a squirter now it's just like no you're just being on set like it's fine it's not okay <laughs> okay and this is, shall we move on I love how people ask us like fairly generic questions and then we like go <laughs> full on well, like rape what? pedophilia and, I, and, and squirting I thought I'll... <laughs> this is not funny this is not funny it's not, we're funny. not funny we're, we're serious oh my god 10 viewers though so I guess there's more now <laughs> okay should we move on yeah it's a it's, it's a tip one is that the last one well, no, yeah because then we've got the um, yeah we surely then we should... we've got the I don't know if we should do that one yeah either. I don't think I think we should do the last one and, and then change that for next time soap. and again yeah. we'll probably do this next week so. okay so we have the last hey, question to finish off this fucking <laughs> bullshit extravaganza that we've got hey I, I mean let us know if you think we went too dark or edgy or something there because no, and no, no, but, but like, yeah, do and also if we actually were helpful and because we, I'm I'm feeling quite insecure now because I feel like I revealed some quite like possibly problematic aspects of myself and that's risky and that's also why we're doing this. Like you said, like we're demystifying ourselves at the same time. We're making ourselves vulnerable. So let us know if you have any feedback on that because yes. or any other questions or any other so questions. Yes, sure. of course. As a curious cat, just yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so last question for today's show. <laughs> Again, thank you so much for sending this yeah. in. This is very lovely of you. I mean, because this is a funny question. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> okay, not sure if this is an appropriate question, but here we go. It probably is. <laughs> it always is. Oh, gosh. I feel like I have a thorough understanding of how to eat pussy. Oh, hey! <laughs> Amen! I know the internal and external anatomy, how to stimulate it, how to adapt to different partners' preferences, but I only have a naive grounding in what to do with boobs. Just stuff that's worked in the past. Do you have any advice from a boob owner's perspective to help ground what to do with titties in a rigorous theoretical framework? So just to put... Oh, by the way... Oh, sorry. Okay, do you want to turn it back on? One thing I was going to critique slightly. <laughs> okay. If you go... I feel like I have a thorough understanding how to eat pussy. I know the internal and external anatomy, how to stimulate it, how to adapt to different partners' preferences. You know that it's not just one thing, right? So if you go internal and external on that to me, I feel like you're talking like internal and then... Because you're like clit and, exactly. and hole. Like basically there's different things. Yeah, there's a lot of different, different things so around that. If you think that pussy is one thing, that's already... Mm, mm, mm. Not just one thing. Like yeah, that. no. Yeah, it's not just like thrust or tap. Like yeah. there's a whole yeah. plethora of pleasure yeah. to be pursued. Plethora. In the <laughs> pussy. Okay, oh my god, I think I've drunk too much. <laughs> no, no, we're good, we're good. We're, we're good, good, we're, we're good. good. Right, so boobs. Right, so boobs. Right, what so do I'm we gonna, do with boobs? I'm going to start with this just because putting it out there straight away, insecurity is... Sometimes, some, basically, we'll talk about the pleasure of what one can do with boobs, but don't be too... Um, 
upset if someone doesn't want to get you very close to them because people have insecurities around that. For instance, my boobs, great shape, lovely nipples, all that stuff. Hairy nipples. I get the hairy nipples. I pluck them out every now and then. Well, yeah, because I just kind of have to. And I've never really seen anyone like actually saying things about them. But basically, sometimes I haven't done the plucking and they do get hairy. And I don't want anyone close to them. So I go, no hands there. So don't think that that's just like someone like completely being like, oh, I don't want this pleasure in the future, or in general, that's not something that turns me on. We just have insecurities. So yeah, I've just put mine out there. Mm. Hey, literally, probably only two or three people know this. And now, now everyone else does. That is also actually really fascinating to me because of all the boobs I've seen, I think Mariam has some of the most spectacular tips this side of Mars. So I'm just putting that out there as a friend who is not in a sexual relationship with you. Thank you. I mean, have mom, thanks, good jeans. But again, you fucking bastard with the tatar jeans that gave me the eyebrows, gave me the mustache, you gave me the hair nipples as well, you bastard. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a thing. So I have huge insecurities basing around that. Like, again, as you said, which is really annoying because I have heard this a few times. Yeah, Ooh, damn straight. <laughs> you like, so I... One gets to that every now and then. I'm actually really insecure because... Mm. Well, I mean, again, it's not that bad. It's not that bad as, like, five or six, right? But it's enough for me to be annoyed. And also, it doesn't no, matter, like, gonna, what you say. Like, if someone has an insecurity, you have to deal with that. Yeah. Like, it and doesn't matter. There might be nothing that... Well, I'm sorry, I'm pointing now. I shouldn't be pointing. <laughs> yeah, you can but, point. <laughs> But, um, yeah, I will sometimes literally not feel yeah. comfortable, like, either in the light or or just someone touching them because I'll feel like that's issues. Oh, my God, I'm sorry. So demystifying myself again. Like, no, but that's important to say because also, like, obviously you're, you're saying, like, you know what to do with, like, pussy because you, like, know how to adapt to different partners and stuff, but boobs are also, like, people want different things as well. Like, there's a lot of... That's what they're asking, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So I have very sensitive nipples. I don't have particularly big breasts, as you can see. Or maybe you can't. Maybe it's just a blank sheet, which illustrates my point quite perfectly, I think. Yeah, like, we're yeah. literally black. I'm literally titless right there, so... No, but we just... Because you're just wearing black, so can I do Can I do, like, a sideways on to, like, show... show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have very small breasts, which might make you think that there's not much to do there, but... Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's a lot you can do with my tiny little <laughs> Oh my god. It's so weird when we're gonna cut up these videos to like the ones where they don't see us getting gradually like more tipsy and it's just this by itself. At some point we will in general probably be getting a critique that like we're giving advice while we're tipsy, but that's where we leave the sort of a bit more no, but I'm sorry, what percentage of sexual situations happen when people are tipsy? I think it's been kind of important to be able to have conversations when people are tipsy. I'm just it's saying, a like project, it's a political basically. fucking project. <laughs> Um, we d we're not doing this because we want to no. we're doing this to illustrate a political issue yes and so as political partisans in this uh, polemic um, I would say I personally as Rowan not as all women as one woman I like a variety of things onto my breasts and it, d it depends on the kind of uh, mood I'm in I can get very, very, very turned on by very light stimuli, like a thumb brushing. I can also get very, very turned on in the right situation by hard stimuli, like a hard pinch or like a bite. A bite. Mm. Something to be said about a good bite. Yeah. But not like a strong bite. The same way you wouldn't want your genitalia to be, be, be bitten, right? Yeah, sometimes like a strong bite. But it has to be built up to that. It's not like in the middle of nowhere. I'm not like, sure. hey babe, strong bite. That's not Yeah, yeah, there. yeah, of course, of course. But also... um. That it's not just the nipple. That is an important thing to remember about breasts. There is a lot of interesting stuff to be done around the edges, yes. on the under cup. Yes. Like, I mean, some guys, some guys are into motorboating. I don't have big enough boobs. That's never worked for me. Have what? you ever done motorboating? Let's go. Have you? 
wonder what is this? Oh, okay. <laughs> motorbike thing is a thing I've only so seen cool. in like porn and like shitty American TV shows. But I guess some people do it. It's like where you put like the dick between your boobs oh, yeah, and you that. do that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. you have you have big enough. See, I don't have big no, enough boobs no, to do that. But, you know. I tried to do it with my teenage boyfriend, and it was just like this weird, painful thing. I don't have like I don't I don't have the gather. Like they just don't gather. They just too like it was just stretching my side boobs. <laughs> I wish I said I didn't because again, there's no, but anyway, but so fuck it. There's fuck that. It. But yeah. that's not. I, mean, I guess that's more to pleasure the dick than. It is the pleasure the boobs doesn't really oh yeah 100% but you know they're trying to I mean, on I guess but, but doesn't matter that you know they're after that I expect a lot of work from yeah. them it's fine <laughs> but I mean it's, I think it's quite easy to figure figure out like what someone like for me for example if like I'm aroused already and someone like brushes a finger off across my boobs like I have quite a strong physical reaction and so you can see that that's something I'm into and I've had guys comment to me before and girls that like I am very very sensitive to like stimuli on on the breast and so it's like I, I give signals very quickly on that yet nothing worse than the sort of teenager you just started making out and someone they're literally on your boobs mm. like mate nah you that. know the claw thing like no one yeah like, like yeah yeah <laughs> I don't get turned on by someone like just cupping. it just seems like someone's first kiss and they're just desperate yeah. to be like no. oh like ticking I've touched the boob you know? yeah 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 it, it was just like yeah 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 literally no no not, so don't, not, don't not, not, not a turn on at some point when there's already all of the things going on but you can kind of you can kind of like even above clothes like if you're like in a situation you can try and like brush and see what happens sure, so absolutely. it can be a very good form of like subtle escalation well, it's play, for sure it's for play. It's play. and like and you will get a response or not and that will like tell you what to do because yeah like and also people have very different nipples like if someone has a nipple piercing that's a whole nother kettle of fish because or they have like really large breasts right sometimes yeah. again people uh, again I've met people that have like perhaps uh, breasts that are large enough that it's actually a fucking health problem for them, right? So they, their back hurts, you know. Some don't even want to take off trouble. their bras because right. it it's can a, hurt, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a trouble to find a particular, you know, apparel for that and all that stuff. So again, um, so they don't necessarily even see it as a sexual object because it's, it's, it's so much giving trouble in their lives, right? So again, what, basically, I guess what we're trying to say, boobs sound great, sound hot, like, I don't know, People have them, but doesn't mean that everyone is. Everyone has a s- sexual connotation to them, right? Or sometimes they do, but not necessarily do they have it in that particular day or in that particular moment. Basically, yeah. it, it is sadly as as easy as boob sound. You do have to be very, very, um, I guess, aware of the situation of their feeling about their own breasts. You know, as well. Sometimes people, yeah. like, you know, as well with the with people in in you know that are. are perhaps have um, you know, think of uh, transitioning and issues like that you know they don't yes. even want to think that breasts are even a thing for them so that's also actually I had um, a sexual experience with a non-binary person uh, last January and it was very interesting because I they were wearing a bind and I didn't I therefore didn't feel comfortable touching their their chest area because I thought that they didn't want me to and then eventually they they asked me to and that was really good because I was staying away from that area because as someone who was non-binary I wanted to respect that so that's also a thing to take into consideration just because someone has breasts does not mean that they want you to gauge them and also I just wanted to say like as you might gather from you know hashtag society boobs are like a huge thing and like as in as in what as in like women or people with with breasts have a lot of insecurities like you might think someone's got this like fantastic huge pair of boobs but they might feel incredibly insecure about them because they've spent their life since they were 14 years old having to deal with being perved on trying to cover up wearing a top yes. too slutty this is it so whatever you, what you might think is like man she's got a great rack to her might be a whole psychological Absolutely. or emotional process that's gone on for 10 years did she with small breasts a lot of girls and people are like uh, laughed at in school they're having like what like uh, fried egg boobs or whatever and like all this stuff and so Again, what might seem like the skinny, athletic, sexy body to you might actually, to to the person with them, feel like I'm insecure about my chest because it's too flat. Yes, absolutely. And so there's there's like a lot. Of... The person with the breasts has a whole history of, of having them. of having them that you don't know about yet, and they might be fine and like happy to take the top off and happy to like throw their tips around, or they might be not, and you are just gonna have to take each person individually Absolutely. and respond to their signals and respond to like maybe they'll lift your hand and move it there and maybe you can even fucking ask like 
can like would you like if I touch my boob you touch your boobs? Could I could I like do you like if I do this? Like Okay, you know. I have a whole other issue with yep. this, for instance. And this was the thing with uh, was it slut slut them bitch? For instance, I hate my breasts to be referred to as tits. I hate mm. it. I just don't like word tits. I ah, interesting. Really okay. It. And someone goes like oh tits titties. I go like that's a straight away turn, it's a turn off. off. Me. Hate it. Boobs, yes. Breasts, yes. Tits, I hate that word. I just hate that word. See, that's really interesting because I like my my mum, you've said you've used tits, like not in a sexual way, obviously, but like in a casual way. And I quite like it as a as a demystifying word, in fact, because it's kind of it's not sexy, and I like it because it's not sexy. Like, it's Whereas, like, like breasts, like... I really want to like breasts, and I feel like as an adult woman who is a feminist, I should like the word breasts. But to me, it just sounds very like bosom, you know, like this is an adult woman's bosom, and I'm yeah, like you see, breasts. I'm like, like I don't feel like I have breasts. I don't feel like I'm enough of a grown up to have breasts. <laughs> I think okay, so I think that maybe goes back to like I was a late bloomer i was in the friendship mm. group with like three other girls they're all like, taller than me and they all just had like you know gorgeous breasts by the time they're like 14 15 and i for me like when i was 17 they suddenly came out of nowhere but literally i was flat chested all my life and then when they did come i'm like i have breasts this is great <laughs> yeah so yeah so i guess i felt very much bo- it's kind of sad, but like I felt feminine after that. Yeah, but that's know, the thing. We grew up in a society, you know what I mean? Yes. Like it's. Yes. It's so a, that's actually a really good say, thing. Not to say that we should be challenging that society because that's what we're. No, hoping, but don't know. put that on the person with the breasts to do. And yeah, that's a really good point. Like the language you use, like yeah, check yeah. in first, see how she or they refer to their own chest before you do. And chest is also a safe one to go with until you know as well. Yeah. Yeah, like because yeah. that also works for like non-binary and like. Trans people just say chest. Like, can I touch your chest? Like, do you like yeah. it when I do this? Yeah. Like, so again, also, sorry. nipple is a is a neutral word. Yes. No connotation. Hundred percent. And so yeah. So I think, well, sadly, as as easy as it sounds, like, oh, what do I do with the with the boobs? Mm. Um, there's actually sadly a whole issue with that is very very individual. But I, I think that's with most people with most of their intimate bits. So yeah. That, um, the thing to do with the sense. boobs is find your partner and find out. And isn't that fun? To be honest. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. there's you, the whole different range, no matter who it is, and that's kind of... Yeah, yeah, and then you find exciting. your own language for, for that, yeah. for them. I mean, interesting, I, I, like, I remember the first time I dated someone with boobs, and it was really exciting for me to know what to do. Because what she wanted me to do to hers was different from what I wanted her to do to mine. And so, again, that was, like, a really, a really exciting thing, because... Yeah. So yeah. It's a good question to ask, but sadly we can't give a definitive yeah. answer, and it's up for you to enjoy finding out, really. But I'm not McDad, you're confident about what to do with the pussy, but you know, there's a lot yeah. going on down there. Yeah. Like, like so anyone, <laughs> always, if anyone goes like, I just fucking know that shit, I'm always like, red flag, red flag. <laughs> so sorry, a little bit, but I mean, it is. but yeah, you'll do all right. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Shall we stop? What? I think so. Oh, yeah, fuck me. It's yeah, 20 past yeah, yeah, nine, yeah. yeah. And also, okay, so there is uh, two bits of feedback from the Curious Cat that we're going to respond to that are not questions at all, uh, that we're going to just put on our Twitter. Mm-hmm. And then there's one question that is basically, uh, they had a look at our question to do with sex work and ask for some extra questions, which honestly, like, as we already said there, we don't even thought that we didn't even think that we were qualified enough to even answer that one. It seems like you know, fatty as as people that are, don't necessarily engage in like stereotypical sex work as such, we uh, I think we did fine. Uh, but this going into detail thing, probably if there was a way for you to, you know, find actual sex workers so this was what, because mostly those were actually very much to do with like labor and yeah. and 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 and. and um, you know, the, I guess the modes of production of sex work, which actually I've only very recently realized that in the States, for instance, um, the big push between in the sex industry community is rather than uh, asking for legalization is decriminalization. And that was very new to me that, you know, decriminalization is better than legalization. I mean, for very, very particular reasons that I mean, I could go into or not. But basically, as we say, as many sex workers as there are, there are as many answers to this. And um, look, we'll see. We'll, we'll maybe maybe we'll tackle it in text. Maybe we'll tackle it next week. Apologies again, because you sent really yeah. long, in-depth sort of and it gave, it gave us a lot of food for thought as well. 100%. But we just, 
yeah and also like the thing is we have an international audience and what the like general sex worker groups want is also very different like say in the US or to here and one thing we can do right now um, if you're in the UK and in London as part of the Women's Day strike there is this Friday a sex work strike and they could also do with support we would yeah if you're if you're an ally and of any gender you're like highly welcome to support the sex work strike on on 8th of March yes um, so that's a good shout out as such. Oh, also, sorry, I just wanted to mention, um, one of the, uh, people I mentioned in the last thing about sex work, Jack the Stripper, they're a Instagram person, they also have a website. They have a book, which is called how, something like, I can't remember exactly the title, but how to not be a dick in a strip club. And that also is worth checking out if you have general questions on how to be a not shit client to a sex worker. So it's also worth checking out and like... There's a lot of uh, sex workers who have, like, openly feminist and, like, pro-unionist platforms and stuff like that who are well worth following and checking out their stuff. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Who can talk better than us, basically. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah, I just don't think we should be the... We we were super, super, like, thankful that people are asking these, ask these questions, and yet... And I know that sex workers don't necessarily want to be approached with them, which is totally fair enough. And, like, we'll see. Perhaps we'll have the courage... Well, not even the courage, but, like, so sort of framework to address it next time. Now we're even out of time anyway. And also we might talk to more, um, more sex workers that we know and try and get the yeah. answers from them, because we... It's a difficult thing because you don't want to take the emotional labour of sex workers who are organising themselves and put it towards helping cl clients and people questioning about sex work, but we also don't want to talk over people who we're talk not engaged them. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could be, yeah, I'd be like, oh, legalise, because then trade unions, you know, my syndicalist part. But, like, no, there are absolutely real reasons for actual real sex workers, you know, to not do that. Yeah. And that's fine. So, again, we shouldn't be, like, talking over them as such. Yeah. So... So, we, yeah, we might cover that in a later episode. We are probably going to do... I mean, we have a few IRL shows coming up. If the questions keep coming in, we may well do another show, yeah. as and when, basically, yeah, because... Yeah, yeah. So, please keep them coming. And, again, as always, thank you so much for your audience. Yeah. It's been, it's been wonderful. We only did three of them. And, actually, really thanks for Freedom News for covering this. Yes. I think, um, and that kind of really brought us... To the yeah, check out our interview on Freedom News if you haven't already. It's um, it's us explaining a bit about why we're doing the show and why we yeah. think it's an important political project. We don't want this to only stay within the anarcho left mm -hmm. or in the left. Actually, the project that originally was, and I'm hoping for it to branch out to, um, you know, addressing people that are politically on the fence, people that, um, you know, as we said, sort of are veering towards looking at how to address feminist issues. And people like Jordan Peterson, which is wrong and shouldn't be that way. Yeah. So, so really, if you have friends, basically, that you know, that are a bit on the verge or don't really have a platform to ask these questions, are struggling, please send them our way. Basically, the more questions we can get from people that are not already, like, preaching to the converted as such, that are that that perhaps necess don't, ne don't necessarily have the leftist safe space, but are veering towards the more libertarian side of things. Yeah. If they could be talking to us, that would be like, really great. don't worry if a question... if you, Don't worry about the phrasing of your question. Don't worry that it doesn't sound woke enough or feminist yeah, enough or no. left enough. We are not the space that is going to judge you for that. Yeah. If you just want to say a question with, like, the problematic words, then we will try and tackle it. Seriously. Yeah, we it's down to us to then give that yeah. answer. Us. We're not going to judge you for whatever you ask. Yeah. And, yeah, we really yeah. put ourselves out there. Like this is yeah. happening, and um, the the hope here is to grow. You know, a new generation of of awesome men that will know how to please people and um, and and be great to them. Yeah. So so if anything, as we always say, this is kind of our investment into our own people. Yeah. And a final shout: if you're a woman and you feel able to strike on Friday because it's International Women's Day. And if you're a dude or other person and you have women in your office who don't come into work on Friday, don't be a cunt. Let them go. You Promote it yourself. It. Support the yes. fuck out of it yourself. Like, it's International Women's Day and... Yeah. yeah so be on the we, right we side of history. Have one day a year where in we it. can, like, really talk about all the bullshit that we go through. Then that's that. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, yeah. thank you for watching. Yeah, thanks so much. This was Anarcho Agonians. Uh, we'll follow see you Rowan soon. On, on, on the Twitter stuff. We'll be releasing this on YouTube soon. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you soon. Love you.